And finally, a transformation outlook is critical for developing a culture of resilience. Now, without it, communities will lack the motivation to prototype and to learn and change. A mindset is basically a frame a person has for interpreting the world and, and making choices. Mind sh mindsets shape people's behaviors and their actions. Now, Carol Dweck at Stanford University's psychology department has done some very exciting research on mindsets for learning and failure. And her research shows that people fall into two groups, those with a fixed mindset and those with a growth mindset. The fixed mindset people believe that personal qualities and talents and abilities are set in stone. You either have them or you don't. These people are focused on proving themselves and defending their ability, their appearance of, of intelligence or their talent. They shy away from anything that would make them seem less able, like resources for extra help or practice, because this would only show their lack of ability. Anything that could reveal a deficiency or a bad outcome is avoided like a new challenge. The growth mindset group, they believe that talent is cultivated over time. They believe in improving oneself with effort and new strategies. They're open to resources and feedback and they see failure as a way to learn, not a permanent state. Their focus is on the process of becoming talented, not on the measure of talent. This work has very important implications for how communities manage failure. The growth mindset people see failure as an action, not as an identity. They say, I failed, not I'm a failure, and that is a big difference. If failure is the result of actions, then different actions can be taken to improve performance, like finding new resources, developing new strategies, uh, finding new supportive relationships. It opens the door to feedback from others about how and what to do next. As an action, Failure is an integral part of learning and development. Now, as part of her growth mindset training for students, Dweck shows students how their brains actually grow connections and get bigger during challenging problems when they're working on tough things, even when they fail. And this relates to another important implication um, of this work for reward systems. Dweck argues that praising process an effort rather than final outcome is a key to cultivating a desire for learning and a real enjoyment for growth. If the process of learning is fun and enjoyable and rewarding, kids will stay engaged and motivated. And communities need to reveal and reward the work of change to make this happen. Communities don't transform overnight. It takes time and along the way learning happens resources grow, no, networks expand. So metrics of success shouldn't wait until the end. The process of transformation needs to be revealed so that the community can engage with it as it's happening. A community's transformation outlook needs to be supported by a deep value for interdependence. The kind of responses and creative solutions that communities need to thrive in the future depend on this. Uh, Paul Sappho is a forecaster from Silicon Valley, and he made an interesting insight about this. He said that our myths struggle to catch up with our reality. We're amplified, we know how to do community, we know how to create networks and do cooperation. Yet, according to Sappho, we're stuck in a mythology of independence. And we really need to move to a mythology of interdependence. Our mythology is still about the lone inventor, the political maverick, or the business entrepreneur. But what about the community of online editors and writers who create Wikipedia, the free online encyclopedia used around the world? Are they the hero, or is it Jimmy Wales, its founder? Our myths and stories tell us what we deeply value. And social media can play a role in shaping our myths and our stories. It can help us shape a culture of resilience. Mapping applications like Google Maps and others can help make community transformation visible by mapping expanding networks and partners and projects. Wikis and blogs can reveal the process 
of transformation and invite feedback. The city of Melbourne, Australia has a website, Future Melbourne, that does this for its strategic planning process and governance activities. When you go through it, you're literally seeing the community's collective brain get bigger. You're seeing thinking and learning in action transpire over blog posts and photos. And also video and audio are great for capturing stories and helping to create a narrative of interdependence. So I see Amplified Leicester as a community that's laying the foundation for resilience. I see the early signs of empowered groups. I see community-based prototyping that's offering a learning opportunity for the whole community. Now the importance here is not the individual projects, although each one is important, but the real value is the collective insight from the process of experimenting with these projects. Some of them may not be around next year, but that doesn't matter because you learned and you created learning and design assets. I see important storytelling about people and technology and collaboration, both online and at this event. These are important actions that are helping Lester create a mindset for learning and transformation. I think Amplified Lester has clearly taken the first important step in responding to the resilience imperative. This is a great contribution to the city and to other communities.